Welcome to Thursday night on the Ulysses International Channel. I almost said welcome to Thursday Night Fading Suns, but as you may tell from um, the people that we have and the names on the screen and the cool art that we have in the lower uh, corner, we are not playing Fading Suns tonight. My heart is still too sore and too broken from last week to continue with Fading Suns. So instead, we are going to run Myth Tales of Legend. Uh, the Lost Barrow. This will be a play test, or a, not really a play test, because it's out in the wild. This will be the first live showing of The Lost Barrow, which is an adventure that I wrote uh, for Myth Tales of Legend and which Ross designed. So um, this is sort of a unique experience for both of us to have uh, a game that uh, we both have been working on, we've been talking about with Campfire Chats. If you're at all interested, we... Um, there are no secrets. We have shared so much about myth <laughs> that you should just go check out the Campfire Tales and jump right in. But seeing as we're going to start a new arc here, we're going to do a little three to four week arc on Myth Tales of Legends, show you the Lost Barrow. It's designed to be played in a single night, but we're going to take it a little slower, uh, kind of expand out a little bit. No one here, save for Ross and I think Becca, have um, have any experience with myth. So we're going to dive right in. Um as always, thank you to the chat uh, for participating. Thank you to Lissy's International for uh, hosting us on this channel. And uh, thank you to JD, who works tirelessly behind the scenes. The only reason this show goes off with any modicum of professionalism is due to our producer. So uh, to JD, huzzah. This is just coffee. Huzzah! Um, Ross, would you like to give us a brief intro into the world of myth before we get started into the rules? We'll have you guys introduce your characters. We'll do the intros after this. Ross, do you want to give us an introduction to the world of myth? Where did it come from? What is Tales of Legend? All right, so Myth Tales of Legend is a fantasy role-playing game set in the world of myth, the board game. Uh, the new version of which is called Myth Dawn of Heroes, and it's coming out soon from Ulysses Spiel. So Myth is a fantasy world, but it is a place where adventurers are very novice, starting at a very low level and eventually telling their tales ab about how they became heroes. And uh, th there's an interesting narrative approach here where in Myth Tales of Legend, the idea is we're all actually... Our characters are all sitting around a campfire some far future point telling stories of our past adventures. So we're we are now going to tell the story of one of our first adventures, That's which funny. is of course the Lost Barrow. Um, so we're gonna get into it. Before we get started, let's just have everyone introduce themselves in case you're new to the stream uh, watching. We'll have you guys uh, introduce the players uh, to everybody and introduce the character that you're playing. And I'll provide a little bit of uh, world background on, on it. So Mark, let's have you introduce yourself and uh, Nightfinder. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mark. Uh, you've seen me in lots of things that Iconic and Ulysses puts on. Play various characters. All good. All your characters are good or all of the games that you play? All, all my good? characters are good. As I look at I mean... Jexa. Uh, I'm playing Nightfinder, a Horani, uh, which is like a rat person, uh, apprentice, which so I cast magic mm -hmm. with my enchanted stick. And uh, my best friend is... Find the note. Uh, is Arthan, who is not here, but will join us. He's in the not next here story. tonight, but that, that's that's my bestie. That's that's why I went out on this adventure to help protect him. All right, um, Ross, do you want to tell us who you are playing tonight? Yes, I am playing Kenneken the monk. Kenneken is a uh, Tavian, which are kind of like mongoose people, um, and and Kenneken, uh, you know, he is. A very very novice adventurer which means he really basically just starts out with like a belt mm -hmm. <laughs> and his bare hands uh but fortunately for me i've been trained how to fight with, with those bare hands and uh luckily for me um i can also say that uh knife fighter you're you're very useful i consider you useful for your spells and your way of people but your sense of humor not so much uh becca you want to introduce yourself? I just clapped in front of the mic. I apologize. <laughs> yes, uh, I am Becca, and tonight I am playing 
broken bow. I'm a spriggin. They're tree people. So I move slower, but I can, you know, fight. <laughs> FYI to chat and everyone watching, JM Nick this is my first voice, so this is the second <laughs> one you guys get. <laughs> wow, just uh, just throw me right under the bus there, good lady. Wow. Um, Maddie, there it is. There it is. Uh, you want to introduce yourself and your character. Uh, so Maddie um, was playing Thursday nights. Now I plays Tuesday nights. Now I'm playing Thursday nights again. Because um, we're going to go back I to the am, old boy here after the myth. I know. I'm so excited. Can't wait to get some battle buns back in my hair. Uh, <laughs> your character's not there yet. Shh, shh, don't rant on my parade, Mark. <laughs> um, and tonight I am playing Durin, a dwarf, um, who's very particular and sneaky. Hmm. So we'll see how that goes. All right. And Evan, formerly known as Father Bell. Hi, everybody. Don't remember me from such memorable roles as Father Bell, who <laughs> to bring back to bring back the old boy, he only had to die. Um, and uh, and and uh, Rodrigo, Rodrigo Spinoza. But tonight I am playing LCR, and LCR, LCR is an elf, and sometimes I have to take things, but that's okay. I mean, you know who my best friend is? My best friend is Broken Bell. I love him. He's great. He's my favorite. And we are besties. And, you know, it's I like true. pretty much everybody else. But, but <laughs> anyway, I didn't take that. That's not me. No, I think I just found it. It's fine. And uh, before we get any further, thank you to all of the fans in the chat. Thank you to Rook Cat, who shows up every every session and supports us. Just thank you so much. I just wanted to call you out as a special thanks. All right. So we're going to get into... Um, kind of how to play myth because at least three of you uh 60 of the group doesn't know how to do that so um when we come back with week two we are definitely going to have uh screen overlays and throw ups that i can uh kind of show everybody but not like throw ups but like images to to put on the screen uh essentially the core mechanic of myth is a die pool system so you will find on your character sheets um your skills um, there you go. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so when you when I ask for a skill check, you are going to roll uh, a number of d6s equal to uh, the total in your pool for this for a test. And so anytime I ask for a test, that means you're going to roll some sort of die pool. Uh, when you roll, fours and fives count as one success, and sixes count as two successes. Um, for most rolls in the game, you want to roll... Uh, one of the dice to be a specific uh, different color so that you can always tell what that die rolls. Uh, there's, it, it's going to have a what's called the campfire die. So uh, if you roll a one on the campfire die, whether you succeed or not, something bad happens. Some, some narrative complication comes up. Um, when you roll a six and you succeed, something great happens. That's like kind of how you get a critical success. So keep in mind when you roll, you want to have one of your d6s that you can very clearly identify as your campfire die. Um, I will set the difficulty numbers for these die rolls. That's how many successes that kind of you need to come up on your die pool to succeed. And once we kind of get into the game, that's, that's really enough to get started. Uh, once we get into the game, I'll kind of explain what you can do with extra successes, extra sixes. Sixes are called exalted successes, yes? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. And so uh, if you if you meet your difficulty number and you have extra sixes left over, let me know. There are ways that you can use them for additional um, benefits, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, Ross, is there anything we should else we should cover before we jump into our adventure? That you you think as the game designer you would say hey we need to we need to really look at this. Well, I think I think you covered the basics with the uh, the die stuff. I think um, the only thing I would really mention is that uh, defense is how hard it is to hit you. Mm -hmm. uh, fortitude fortitude is how hard it is to hurt you. 
uh, speed is not only how, how, how much distance you can cover, it is also your initiative stat. Um, and that's it? That's about it. The other thing, you, you all have a campfire card. So if you have watched on our Tuesday night games, you guys, uh, as in the chat, if you played on our Tuesday night tour games, you know how destiny cards work. These are much more, I would almost call them much more like Cosm cards. Would you agree with that, Ross? Yes. Where you get one, and they have a major impact on the adventure. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Let's just get started. So, Myth is set in the um, in the region known as the Four Kingdoms. The Four Kingdoms are Blackwall, uh, which is a uh, sort of black powder, steampunk, um, mechanical engineering uh, kingdom. Uh, it's named that because they have so much industry that the walls of their cities and the, uh, the roofs of their cities are stained black from soot. Um, in sort of the middle, there's the Riverlands, which is the... Uh, if you tuned into our campfire chats, you know all about the Riverlands, but it is the most affluent of all of the uh, Four Kingdoms and is also sort of like the touchstone for like kind of any traditional fantasy uh, setting that you would kind of bring to myth. Uh, to the far east lies Haldor, which is a land that once was great and has now fallen um, into almost disrepair. Uh, the kingdom is really a kingdom in name only. It is home to a bunch of nomadic tribes and peoples that kind of uh, roam these vast prairies. Uh, it's home to one of the dwarven holds that is under siege and is really on its last, um, its last hope. I mean, if it doesn't turn... Uh, this war that it's been fighting against the elementals around, uh, that hold will fall, and, and the one of the last two great holds of the dwarves will just pass into memory. And to the south is the uh, desert kingdom of Canis. It is home to viziers and magics and all sorts of strange and unusual um, peoples and phenomenon. Uh, there is a giant... Uh, creature known as the world eater that bores through the fields of light and as it as it eats its way through the desert it leaves uh, portals open to other dimensions and perhaps even other times so there's a lot going on in this uh in the four kingdoms to the southwest of the four kingdoms is the blessed isle of huhanasi which is where the tavians are from these this race of mongoose people that has come to the four kingdoms um spreading um, their teachings, their philosophies, kind of trying to prepare the way for this, um, this new age where um, hopefully peace and harmony will reign in the four kingdoms as it does in Huhanasi. So, as Ross said, this is not a game where you start off as um, kind of the epic hero, um, like in Torg. This is not a, a, a game where you necessarily start off as the peasant who picked up his father's sword. In fact, you may be jealous of the peasant who has his father's sword because dude has a sword. Um, you five have come together with uh, what little spells and training and um, just uh, grit that you have. And you have decided that enough is enough. The darkness is encroaching in on the things and the places and the people that you love and you are going to head out onto the road and you are going to uh, make a difference. Or at least that's the story that you're sharing at some point in the future when you guys are all big damn heroes and remembering these first steps onto the road that led you to where you are. So you and your Barry Mand of Heroes are traveling uh, through the wilds of the Four Kingdoms, moving from village to village in search of adventure, stories, coin, and honestly, gear. Um, you're tired of fighting with fire pokers and uh, homemade bows and uh, sticks and wands that you have chewed yourself, Nightfinder. Uh, that's all I need. That's uh, just uh, for the chat. You should know that uh, Mark carved that stick himself out of a larger stick. Um, it used to be this big. Uh, as you were traveling through the woods, you notice, and it's almost too quiet as you follow this trader's track, uh, the typical forest wildlife sounds are missing. 
as you strain your ears trying to find anything familiar, the sounds of birds, the, the, the creaking of branches as small animals kind of jump um, from one tree to the, another, even the, the faint drone of insects, you begin to hear strange noises uh, that kind of pierce the silence. It definitely sounds like horses whinnying in fear. And so, yes, Restar, uh, they are just some ding-dongs around a campfire. Uh, so we're going to start with a, a perception test. So all of you uh, should have perception listed on your character sheet. Now, with perception checks, you do not use a campfire die. Okay? So what I'd like you to do is uh, roll your perception. This will be a, a number of dice equal to your intellect plus your perception rating. I, I, take... I got two sixes. Okay. Out of three dice, I got two sixes. That's pretty good. Call me lucky rat. So the difficulty for this is two. So you need to have at least two successes to pass this test. Nightfinder, in your case, one of your sixes counts as two successes. So you may what is known as shift um, your, ex your exalted success into... Um, into something else. So you can either get a get more information from the scene, or you can shift it into the serendipity pool. And I'm going to turn it over to Ross. Ross, would you like to explain what the serendipity pool is? Uh, sure. The serendipity pool is a group resource that we can then spend on uh, various things like improving critical hits or extra dice for tests. Uh, it can come in really handy when one of us, for example, needs to make a soap test and we only have, uh, say, two dice to do that. So <laughs> serendipity can be really useful. But it is a group resource, so it helps everybody, not just you. You only get points in the uh, group resource by donating them from tests or by rolling a six on the campfire dice when it is a normal skill check and not a perception check. Yes. Now, the group oh, begins with zero serendipity, but you all have one campfire point. What a campfire point does, um, I get to reward them whenever I choose. Um, as we all know how I run games, that's usually when one of you makes an incredibly bad pun or in the chat bullies me into giving you a um, campfire point. I'm just kidding, chat. I love you. Chat, um, chat, chat. What you can spend a campfire point is, is you can re-roll all of your failures on any test. Um, you can recover shock. You would get a D3 plus one shock back. Now you can't do that if I've already knocked you out. Uh, don't look at me. Ross designed the rules, but I think it's fair and, uh, and a very even balanced uh, rule. Uh, you can also spend a campfire point to make a narrative declaration. I know that guard. I know that tree. We go way back, Broken Bow. You and that elm tree, uh, he, they've never said months. He's a good listener, but uh, you could you could spend a campfire point to make that declaration. So, uh, Nightfinder, are you uh, shifting anything into the serendipity pool? Yes, I will take our first fortuitous roll and throw it in there. Um, Kanakin, uh, I saw you had your hand up. You got four successes. Any uh, any, oh. any shifting? Yeah, I will shift one, which leaves me with two. I will shift it for, in this case, I will shift it for extra information. Okay. Uh, Broken Bow, what'd you get? Uh, I got three total. Okay. Um, uh, Duren? Or Durenna? So I got two, but I also rolled a one. Uh, that's fine. That's fine? Yep. Okay, so then I got two. Uh, so you got two, and then uh, Evan, what'd you get? Uh, I rolled uh, a five and a six, so that's three. All right, LCR. All right, so everyone passed their test. All right, so when you pass, you definitely hear the sounds of horses whinnying in fear. It's a very distinctive noise. However, you all also hear the distinctive crack of a pistol going off. Kanakin, you, with your one shift, you also hear the sounds of creaking wo wood um, as if there's, uh, like, planks under under uh, stress. 
and you can hear dull thuds of weapons, like bladed weapons, slamming into the in, into wood. Um, and they're all the, coming from up ahead. The wise make haste while the foolish linger. Let's go. And I'll start heading in that direction. Um, what in the pit is that noise? <laughs> so uh, one of the neat things about character creation uh, in in myth is go check out our videos, the campfire chats. Seriously, there's just a ton of great information in there. But um, you will get a background, which will give you some information. And we have these, uh, like, our pre-generated characters. Because you can go to drive through RPG right now and download the Lost Barrow and follow along at home and give the play, give the, my players, you know, all sorts of insider information. Uh, but each of the pre-generated characters comes with uh, like a catchphrase that they that they use. It's sort of like a role-playing uh, hook to kind of lean into. Ross is using his "the wise say X while the foolish say Y," and I believe Nightfinder's yours is "by the pit." Yeah, what in the pit is that? What in the pit is that? exactly. All right, so you guys, uh, what are you guys doing? The the five of you, you uh, you all hear. All right, Kanakin is is uh, heading out. All right. As you round the bed in the trail, you can see a brightly colored merchant's wagon surrounded by a half dozen shambling skeletal figures. You all know the unholy when you see them. Now, the unholy are, are the undead, the unquiet spirits, the newly risen, or the skeletal shamblers of the Four Kingdoms. Uh, you can see that these... Um, while they are definitely, uh, their bones are, are stained as if they've been buried in the ground for a long time, they are covered with fresh signs as if they have dug themselves free recently. Uh, clumps of moss that is not quite dried out yet. Uh, vines that are in the process of dying. Clumps of earth that kind of stick between the ribs and fall into wet clods as they uh, take these weapons that they have pulled uh, from the earth. They are, they're really no better than what you're carrying. They're rusted blades. Um, uh, one has a, has a very old looking hatchet that looks like it's about to come apart. And they are attacking. Um, you don't see any horses. None of the ones that have screamed are anywhere. Or any pack animals. There is a merchant, a young woman wrapped in leathers, and she is currently reloading a black Wallian pistol that is still has smoke pouring from the barrel. Unholy skeletons take uh, clumsy swings at her as she gets up uh, even higher on top of the wagon, finishes reloading her pistol, and sees you. Help! Is all that she says as she's able to lower the pistol, which cracks suddenly as a gout of flame and smoke come out of the end of it. So now is, we when, have to roll initiative now is now? when we would roll initiative. So um, you all have an attribute on your character sheet called um, speed. speed. Now speed is how far you can move it around, but it's also the pool that you will roll to uh, uh, take an, um, make initiative rolls. So if you guys would give me an initiative test, I would appreciate that. And is that with the campfire die? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, sorry, I think you explained this earlier. Is it campfire dice in addition to that or instead it, of one of them? It is one of your... Oh, okay. So if you have I five, you would roll four dice of the same color and one um, campfire die. Okay. Oh, hey, GM. So GMs, you also have resources. I have threat... Uh, equal to the number of players when I start. So thank you for all five of you showing up tonight. When Lily shows up in two weeks, I'll have six threat. Um, I get to also. Use... Oh, go ahead. Also, really quick, uh, it's important to know that we all have one campfire point, but Elciara has a driving goal as her background. She has a particular thing she wants more than anything else, and that means she gets one extra campfire mm -hmm. point. Yeah, but we already know what that is. She just wants to steal stuff. Do we? Do we know what that is? I do. I, don't know. I have read through all of them. observance. By the way, I just got to say, I really like the character sheets that they put together for the, the quick start. Um, 
they're they're not just like one page character sheets. They have a lot of information, uh, great art. Four pages. Four pages. All right. So let me go ahead and roll on mine, and we will get into initiative. Skeletons don't get initiative. Oh, uh, I'm. I think you're gonna you're gonna find that uh, my shamblers are doing just fine. Um, Kanakin, how many? Uh, what did your uh, how many successes do you have in this I was supposed to be really good at this. I have <laughs> I have a speed of five, but I only rolled two two successes, so my initiative is two. All right. Um, Elciara. So here's the thing. <laughs> I have a six, a six, a five, and a one on the campfire die. Ooh. Tell me what it means, GM the Jam. Uh, jam. I'll, I'll let you know. So how many did you get? You had five? Uh, well, so five. Yes. LCR. A and a six, a six, a five, and a one. And you right? have a negative on the campfire die. All right. Uh, broken bow. Um, I have a... So I'm kind of the opposite of that uh, flighty kenku there, or knock in there. Um, <laughs> I only have a speed of three, but I got five successes. Woo! Oh, excuse me while I lumber in. Uh, uh, Duran, what did you get? Um, well, uh, zero successes on my regular dice and a five on the campfire All right, dice. So that still counts so as one success. Means. Okay. Yeah, the campfire dice, you treat like a normal dice. It only is different on a one or a six. And on a six, it's still two successes. Mm -hmm. It just has an extra effect. My, my campfire is a six. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah, right. I was Ooh. trying to say that. No, I, I, I heard you. Uh, oh, sure. Nightfinder. Yeah, you did it. Two. Two. All right, uh, so I'm going to let Broken... I will just follow in the shadow of Broken Bow. Uh, Broken Bow, I'm going to let you go first. Uh, one, you have the uh, the slight advantage here. They are, uh, because you kind of came around the corner and they did not see you uh, because of your six on the campfire die, I'm going to count them as surprised for their very first... Uh, for, your, for your action alone. Well... At this point, I think we're all surprised that I see Kenneken like feet moving really fast and broke about his time taking this one giant step to get in front of him. <laughs> like it's ran, you know, just, just, just covers so much ground. Once I got my momentum going, I was good. I just, I'm not fast to yeah. get started. So I'm, I, on this action, I will grant you a bonus die to anything that you do. <laughs> Trees are natural sprinters. That's right. No. Very quick cover Be short distances. Uh, I do love the fact that the chat is like, skeletons are way better than JM's evil trees. Um, so, uh, Broken Bow, uh, they just didn't notice you. Uh, they didn't know. They didn't notice that you were I'm not another tree. tree. They were just like, quick, I'm we're in the middle of good. trees, kills the merchant. Oh, wait, that merchant or that tree I is coming to kill us. Go for it. Yes. What would you like to do? I hide my true form. Um... Well, I, I will then continue on with my momentum and attempt to just kind of uh, sweep a bunch of them over with my hefty stick. All right. So uh, go ahead and you will give me a fighting roll. Excellent. And you are trying to hit the defense of the Shamblers. Um, is this with that plus one or no? You will get to add this plus one into this for this very first action. All right, there's just so many dice. It's a total of ten. Nice. Broken Bow is a soldier, so attacking things is what she's really good at. Yes. Uh, that wasn't great. My campfire is a three, so we're okay there. Um, I have five successes. You have five successes. All right, so yes. you need two okay. to hit the Shamblers. Lovely. Do you have, were there any sixes left over after you hit your... Yes. All right, so you can shift. You can either shift mm -hmm. one of those sixes into a serendipity point, or you can do extra damage with it. 
Um, I'm going to shift it into a serendipity point. All right. Sure. I feel confident on that one. Well. That um, brings us to two. Two serendipity. That's right. <laughs> now, uh, Becca, as a soldier, you have the ability, a uh, harvest of bones. All right. Mm -hmm. As a simple action. Literally. That's right. You are harvesting <laughs> bones. Um, as a simple action, you may gain one of the following benefits. Uh, you can add uh, plus one uh, rank, or so plus one per two ranks. So right now, plus one die to your next attack roll, or add plus one bonus damage dice uh, when you make a critical hit. Okay. Did I make a critical hit? No. So you need your you need a six on a campfire die in order to do that. All right. So here's what you're going to do when you roll your hefty stick. Um, you're going to do seven points of damage plus one extra die of damage, but you shifted one, so you get two extra dice of damage. Now, these work just like any other die. So if you roll a one, two, or three, the extra dice don't do anything. Four or five is plus one point, and sixes are plus two points. So why don't you let me know? She, sh she shifted for serendipity, James. Oh, she so shifted she's for got serendipity. One That's correct. Yeah. Thanks, Ross. Uh, six. All right, so you will do a total of nine damage to this creature. So it's got a fortitude of three. Uh, Ross, <laughs> uh, do you want to okay, explain so, how this works? Yeah, so your damage value is the amount of, is the amount you roll total, uh, and that value is then compared to their fortitude. Any 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 number above their fortitude is convert, that's how much vitality they take. So if their fortitude is three, and you did nine, that means they take six damage, six vitality. Well, yeah. And uh, sadly, not good. Yes, yeah, sadly for my uh, my shamblers, uh, shamblers only have four vitality. So, uh, broken bat, what does it look like when you come up uh, moving much quicker than anyone anticipated? Um, I like I said, I, I was using my momentum, and it kind of carried me through, and I just kind of swept the stick down and uh, took off one of the heads, and kind of kept lumbering a few more steps before I stopped and turned around. With my did stick you, raised. Did you call or... it like Babe Ruth? <laughs> did you call it? No. <laughs> no, but later I'll ask you to go get it for me. <laughs> and thus the game of golf was invented. Um, El Sierra. Now, unfortunately, it's you story. are fast. But um, you actually try to move too quickly. And uh, you step into a hole that you didn't really see. You're kind of, your Ooh. foot kind of... Uh, catches on a clod of dirt and you step through uh just kind of a uh a natural divot in the path i need you to roll a d3 for me does it look like where a body might have clawed its way out of the dirt uh, yeah it sort of does look like exactly where a body might have clawed its way out of the dirt that would be a two uh you got a, a two on the d6 or a two on the d3 a a two on the d3 All right you take two points of shock so shock is kind of like um endurance shock. it's not wounds it's not vitality but you can shock yourself into unconsciousness you kind of step it jolts all the way up your leg as you kind of catch yourself what do you do with your turn okay. oh Ciara, be careful can you shock the monkey uh, i'm fine i meant to do that <laughs> I'm gonna. I'll rub some dirt on it later. Um. Uh. Well. Um. There's these. Here's the thing. There's bad creatures attacking somebody, and uh, that's that's not right. So, um. I uh, if I can in my shock condition, I'd like to take my very very sharp butter knife and attack a shambler. <laughs> Uh, give me your uh, your fighting roll to attack the Shambler. Okay. Ross put all of these pregens together, and they are delightful. Uh, I have one success. That's a miss. <laughs> uh, so you bring your butter knife in, and you kind of take a swipe. You're used to swiping at things with flesh. 
Yeah. Uh, tailless. Do you? Grubbers. This would be a good time to do that campfire point, though. You could do a campfire point if you want. So, so if you want to spend a campfire point, two things happen. One, you get to say, "Hey, I'm spending a campfire point," and you get to reroll your failures. But two, you have to go. Wait, wait, wait. That's not how it happened. You have to narrate how you, in I, as you are retelling the story. What actually happened? It looked like you were about to miss, but what happened that sort of aided you to let you re-roll these things? Yeah. Well, far be it for me to counter, uh, to uh, to do other than the game designer uh, suggests. Uh, so, <laughs> here's the thing. You see, it looked like I was going to miss that thing. And I took that knife, and uh, it did. It did sort of miss. But... You know, I'm very fast on my feet. It hurt. It hurt a lot. Boy, did it hurt. But also, sleight of hand. And suddenly, I put, I reversed that knife, and I just swung back, and I stabbed it. Oh, I stabbed it good. That's four. All right, so you need two to hit. Do you have any sixes left over? Here's the thing. Um... <laughs> I am but the humble wow. GM here, uh, Evan. So tell me what the thing is. So, yes, I do have a six left over, but I also rolled a one on the campfire. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's let's finish the attack, and I will tell you what happened. So, uh, LCR, you uh, are you doing the six for extra damage, or are you shifting into the? Oh camp? yes, I am. All right. So go ahead and. Uh, I saw I saw what my best buddy did, and I want to do that. But what's the stabbing. what is the base damage on your uh, sharp butter knife? Uh, so it says five plus one XD. All right, so it's five plus one die, one extra die of damage, okay. and you're gonna roll two extra okay. dice because you're shifting that six for an extra die of damage. So okay. a total of total of two dice in your hand. Okay, two dice in my hand, two dice in the dice box. I rolled a six, so that's two, I guess. So five plus two five. is seven. Yeah. All right. So seven is above their fortitude, and I, I hate to say this, but it is just enough to kill a shambler. So Woo! what does it look like before I tell you what that one on your campfire diet did? Ah, well, like I said, flipped the knife, stabbed it back, and then I did my end zone, end zone dance. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Um, as you were you doing your by Elciara. your end zone dance, um, you did not learn your lesson. Broken Broken Bow was like, you need to be careful when you walk. And so LCR kind of takes a step to the left, and she takes a step to the right, and she disappears. I need you to roll another D three for me. <laughs> oh no, Elciara. Where'd you go? Here's the thing. I'm fine. The three. Okay, so you take three more points of shock as you fall into one of these things where the the shamblers have crawled their way out of. Hey, that's an important clue that you found there. Very bodily. Um, all right. It is now the shamblers' turns. I think I think I put LCR at zero shock. Does it put you at zero shock? I'm at zero shock. <laughs> but you're safely in the hole. You are safe in the hole. My uh, Big five. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm just really, really tired. Let's carry on. So, the remaining shamblers um, turn towards you. You've killed two of them. <laughs> yeah, so there are four left. I love your broken bow, Becca. Um, oh, good. Yeah, you're not going to kill it off like you did uh, the good lady Millie? Um, no. Uh, the good lady Millie uh, shall rest in pieces and uh, well deserved. Uh, so, Broken Bow, they're all coming for you because you reminded. No. Uh, one of them is coming for you, okay. Broken Bow. Um, actually, I voted for the first you, voice. You were the I'm only one up there, so they are, they are coming for you. Yeah, it happens. What is your defense? My defense is two, but my fortitude is five. 
All right, so one of the first three hits you with a shift for extra damage. And the second one hits you with a shift for extra damage. All right, so your fortitude is five, you say. Yeah. Remember that time we didn't make it out of the first encounter? <laughs> yeah, that's happening now. Uh, so the first one hits you with scavenged weapons for six points of damage. So your fortitude is five, so you'll take one vitality as he kind of comes in with what seems to be a rusted, um, not so much a fork, but something that you would stab meat and then roast it over an open pit. Oh. Can we do anything to not take damage? What was that? Is there something we can do to not take damage? So you, uh, let me finish doing this and then you can decide if you wish to soak. Uh, the second one will do seven points. So you would take two Ooh. more uh, vitality. Now, when Ow. you go to soak, do, do, do. Jump back here. So when you make a soak roll, um, you, can try to um, reduce the damage you do. You take a shock for each time you go to soak. So Evan cannot shock right now, or cannot soak right now. Um, and then you make a constitution test. You're gonna roll number of dice equal to your constitution. Okay, don't include a campfire die on a soak roll. Every success converts one vitality damage into one shock damage. So I would take a shock for rolling and possibly three more shock? Yes. Well, you would take a shock for your first... You would take a shock for each soak roll you made. And then possibly a second shock. So you would possibly be at five shock if you successfully soaked all your wounds. Or all your vitality. How hard is it to get vitality back? And how hard is it to get shock back? So shock, shock comes back, back at the end of the scene. Uh, do you want to t explain vitality? Uh, well, okay. So basically, yeah. As long as we could take a a, a short respite, which is like a, an hour, you're going to be fine in terms of shock. Uh, vitality uh, comes back slower. Uh, you're going to need you're going to need more time and and somebody to to, to probably work on you with uh, with healing mm -hmm. uh, to 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 heal up your your uh, your vitality. If only someone were playing Arthen. That's actually his his deal. Ah, but uh, I have a plan. A plan so clever that if you pinned a tail on it, you could call it a fox. But we'll get to that later. So, are you soaking Broken Bow? Now, here's the other thing. If you lose more than half of your vitality, you are heavily wounded, and you will take a penalty to all tests that you uh, make. And then, yes, I might as well shock. Shock so. Or soak, sorry, I soak. Okay, so one shock to soak, and then okay. give me a constitution check. Without a campfire dice, correct? That is correct. There are a few th tests that you will make that do not include campfire dice. Uh, perception is one, soaking is another. Uh, I got one success. All right. That's all you needed for the first hit. Yeah, so so you will have you will take two shock instead of the first vitality. Are you going to so, question? Yes. So if you attempt to soak and fail both your rolls, you're still going to take shock. You're going to take the one for shock for attempting it. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, so are you going to try and so Thanks. soak the second one, okay. Broken Bow? Thanks, Ross. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. All right. So you're up to three shock. Yeah. I'm not super thrilled, but it is what it is. Oh, look at all those successes. Woo! Do I get to put any in serendipity? <laughs> can you convert? I just got five successes. Can you convert from soak rolls? <laughs> well, yeah, so you, you, you can't shift on a soak roll. Okay. I got five successes. All right, so you just take a bunch of, of uh, shock as these things kind of thud into you. Um, uh, Kenneken, you are up, and then Nightfinder. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to play The Darkness Beyond the Campfire as my campfire card. And that says that I need to narrate how this current situation becomes worse, and then we all must make a courage test. So... 
the eyes of the shamblers, which were currently sort of a dull amber, blaze crimson, and a huge cloud of bats streaks out of the trees overhead, shrieking like the souls of the damned. All of this is kind of going to cause us to just kind of stumble backwards. And in the chaos, one of the bats knocks over a lantern on the wagon, and the wagon catches fire. <laughs> now, Roz, why don't you explain why this would be a good thing to play? It because it sounds so, like a bad thing. You just set, it does. You set the wagon we all on have, fire. And we all have to make a courage test. But anybody who passes the courage test gains two campfire points, and anybody who fails still gets one. All right, so so we're all we're all going to make a courage test right now. Uh, now uh, you're going to uh, the difficulty is three, mm -hmm. and just because we are part of a group called the Heroes of the Wild, uh, bravery is kind of our thing. So we all get plus one extra die to courage tests. So whatever your courage is on your sheet, you get to add one die to that. Now, if you go back and look at, well, they roll this. If you go back and look at our campfire chats, I'm going to keep pounding on this drum. Um, you'll you'll understand that as a um, as a group of heroes in myth, you get to tell the GM, hey, here's kind of what we see our story being about. And so, as the group being the heroes of the wild, they're they're kind of saying, hey, we want to be these these brave adventurers who go out into the wild places of the four kingdoms and find our adventure. And so you get a mechanical bonus, but there's also a narrative component of saying, hey, at GM, this is this is what we want our group identity, at least at this point, to be about. So did everyone who did anyone fail their their courage test? Well, I have a question. Sure. So I'm adding one because of the group we're in, but then I'm also stubborn and it says I gain plus three D. Mm -hmm. So does that mean I'm adding four? Yeah. Yeah, dwarves are exceptionally hard to scare. That's right. Um, <laughs> and then... There's a whole subclass of the dwarven prankster, but we haven't gotten into that yet. They, they really try and scare their fellows. And... Are any of these campfire, then? Um, uh, courage test, yes. Courage you, test, yes. You will use a campfire. I realize i got to not make jokes like that, Ross, because people may think you that really... I'm being serious. Because... <laughs> All right, did, For real. Did anyone fail? So here's the thing. I am beyond fear and courage. So I failed. <laughs> I am blissfully unaware. You are blissfully wah, wah. unaware. I got a six on my campfire and a six on just the normal dice. All right. Um, so here's the thing. If you succeeded, you get two campfire points. If you fail, you get one. But you suffer from fear which means the difficulty of all tests that you take in the scene is increased by two. So Kanakin, what scared you so much that you are, you've been rattled? You are a monk trained at the Tavian Monastery, and yet something has rattled you here. Well, what you don't realize is that monks are a superstitious lot. And a, a group of bats shrieking like the souls of the damned flying around is not something I'm used to. Rodents are things I eat, not things that I attack, that attack me. So yeah, I, you, you hear, you, you hear kind of a high pitched, ah, as all these bats go flying by. All right. So playing a campfire card does not take your action. Uh, so you've, right. you've generated camp, uh, campfire points for everyone. What are you doing with your action there, Kanakin? Oh, uh, sorry. I uh, will. Duren, you had your hand up. So both Mark and I rolled a six on our campfire die. Does that do anything or no? Um, so yeah, it would add a narrative um, bonus to uh, what you have just done. So let me. Uh, so one, uh, you're not going to necessarily be as scared of these. Uh, you know that shamblers can cause terror in people. I'm going to say that you two are immune it to their their fear effect for the rest of the scene. Okay. All right, Kanakin. So yes, I am going to run up onto one of the uh, the shamblers, and I will attack it with my ribbon hand technique, which means my my fist will lash out towards it. Um, so I have a pretty good amount of dice here. It's the difficulty is too higher though, because I'm like uh, you, you bats. Are... I hate bats. Why did it have to be bats, Jock? 
Okay, not too terrible. Uh, so that's going to be a four, but I think I'm going to I'm going to campfire point it. Okay, so uh, so what are you misremembering? What 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 narrative uh, change do you want to mix up here? So yeah, around the campfire, I'll say it sure looked like I was about to miss that guy because I was so worried. I was so scared. Uh, but then I remembered my master's voice telling me that fear can also be a powerful tool if you harness it. So I leaned into the fear and swung the, the miss actually swung me around full circle and I turned it into a kick. Okay. And uh, that is way better. That is two, four, six, eight. Uh, that will uh, so difficulty four because of your your fear. So you come in, kind of harness your fear, and you really. Uh, lean into it. Cool. I'll put those both in damage. Okay. Uh, so it's five plus three dice. And I've got two more. So that's a total of seven. All right. What's it look like? I I will I will mimic Broken Bow's uh, attack by kicking the head off of one. And its body sort of wanders around aimlessly for a few seconds and then collapses. While the skull, the jaw chattering goes flying off into the night. Uh, it does, does it collapse into a hole? Uh, it It does. does. <laughs> It, it does it collapse on top of LCR? no no that, that would be cruel yeah. no um as as the head goes flying you definitely uh pick up this kind of low guttural unholy um language as it goes flying that says the trees are attacking um <laughs> night finder you're up now one thing that we haven't covered yet is the better you describe an action, the more the more narrative that you make a description, worth, whether it's an attack or casting a spell or really getting into uh, intimidating or persuading someone, I may uh, give you a narrative bonus of up to two dice uh, for describing something really well. So your Nightfinder moves closer. From the pitch you came, but my stick is mightier than bacon. And I hit them with. <laughs> Your stick is mightier than bacon. Thanks for chat. You're, you're, I can only assume. <laughs> I got a six on my campfire die. All right. So that, critical is, that is a critical hit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine with the campfire die. All right, Ross, do you want to explain what a critical hit does? Uh, you get to add one extra die of damage when you do a critical hit. Mm -hmm. Also, it still counts as a six on the uh, on the die, so we're also going to get a serendipity out of that. Put you at three. I'll put it in, I'll put it in the pool because I'm a team player. No, it, it goes into yeah, the pool. Yeah, so as a critical but... hit, you oh, get okay. basically so you don't, you don't, It just goes there, yeah. but you also get a die of damage. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I have, well, let's see. I, what do I need to hit him? Uh, Three? Two. two. Okay, well, I got two sixes. Besides the campfire left over, does that shift Dam or? Damage or one can go into serendipity. You can't you can't put more than one per roll into serendipity. So. Now, I should also point out that every time you guys roll a critical hit, um, I get a threat. It's true. <laughs> Not that I'm keeping track. Um, so with, with my extra sixes, can I shift it twice for damage? Because I have two sixes? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, you can. Okay. And then one because of the critical. Mm -hmm. So that's three extra. So I'm going to roll five extra damage for damage. Because the spell is already a set plus 2D. So what's, well, that was a lot of nothing. So what is the, what spell are you casting? Let's kind of describe what's going <laughs> it's on. It's Arcane Lance. It's Arcane, arcane Lance. Lance out of my magic stick. So what does it look like for Nightfinder when he casts an Arcane Lance? It is a fiery blast that streaks out and engulfs the skeleton, Shambler, uh, kind of like bacon fat. Okay. Just erupts. What? Uh, how many? What's the base damage on that? I apologize. Five. All right. And you got nothing on your... Uh... Uh, one, one, two, two, three. Don't! Five <laughs> dice, not one came up. Wow. All right.
right. Uh, so, uh, Durin, you see your friend. Uh, uh, it smells like, uh, apparently, burning bacon. Um, what do you do? Oh, this might be a good time to point out the charring for... Oh, that's a good point. Uh, Knife for Knife Finder. You have an ability on your character sheet called the charring. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, but I have to spend vitality to increase the damage. Mm-hmm. So does the skeleton die? The skeleton does not die. Is it close to death? <laughs> you don't know. It doesn't bleed, so there's no real way to go, hey. Well, is it just a little bit on fire, or is it very much on fire? It's very much on fire. So for uh, for apprentices in the game, they have an ability called the charring. Their body serves as the focus for the elemental energies that they wield. After spending one or more serendipity to increase the dice for magical effect, they can spend up to three vitality to get an e equal number of shifts. Can I spend a campfire point to re-roll my failure damage? Yeah. I mean, I've got three, so. I will re-roll the damage. There we go. That's three more points of damage. So it would be eight instead of five. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Well, Don't you remember? It really caught on fire and then collapsed. It died. All right. Well, with eight, there are now two shamblers remaining, but there's only four of you. You still don't really know what happened to uh, Elsie. Elsie. <laughs> Durin, what are you doing? She's hiding like she does. Well, first, I'm going to use my catchphrase of this, this doesn't smell right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that uh that really fits and i'm going to give you a campfire a campfire point for it. and then then she's gonna take a second and, and center herself because there's so much dirt and, and the bodies are covered in, in dirt mm -hmm. and, and more dirt there's a lot of dirt and it's, it's, it's dirty. It's, it's real dirty. Uh, and then she's going to shoot one of them. All right. Uh, you have an antique crossbow. So uh, you're going to make a ranged attack here. Yes. So it says 9D. So does that mean I roll nine dice? You're going to roll nine dice. Okay. And one of them's a campfire? One of them is a campfire. Ooh. Everyone on the floor. Okay. Um, one, two, three. Um, three regular successes. At one six, and then a six on my campfire. All right. So you got a critical hit. So a point will go into the serendipity pool. Um, now you can shift that other one for damage or for uh, max serendipity is party members uh six. six can never exceed six all right so you got you could shift another one into the serendipity pool if you wanted um sure why not okay so you're sitting at five and you're going to do five points of damage plus two bonus dice one for the regular attack and one for your critical hit nope all right Rolled so two and a three so five points of damage Yes. Uh, that leaves two of the Shamblers still standing. Uh, it would be uh, Elciara, but she's taking a dirt nap. Not like a dead <laughs> dirt nap, but oh, oh. Yeah, you are literally in the oh. dirt and sleeping. So I felt I, like it was. It was I got important. him on the rope. <laughs> was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know that you know that feeling when you get wrapped up in the blankets and they're kind of like like enveloping you. You kind of have that feeling, Elciara. What wherever wherever you are. Uh, currently at while you're uh while you're napping but it is broken bow's turn elciara where'd you go i'm gonna come <laughs> lumbering back and swing my stick again <laughs> i'm totally giving you a campfire point for uh your broken bow that is uh that is spectacular thank, thank you <laughs> So yeah, lumbering back, trying to find where in the world did El Sierra go? 
She just disappeared. I mean, she's fast, but like, that was really fast, guys. Nine. It's really, it's really amazing that you can't find her with that red coat that she's always wearing. Um, right? Maybe. Yeah, I'm just swinging my stick again. Go for it. Oh, that one ended up down on the floor, so we'll roll this one. All right. Oh, my campfire die is a six, guys. Wow. Woo. All right, you guys are at max serendipity. We are. We, it's user lose time on the serendipity. Mm -hmm. But we're also critting the crap. You out really of these are. Two. Um, I I got a total of four. Or no, sorry, total of six. Okay, so you need two to, two to hit it. Uh, how many uh, additional sixes do you have? You have your one from your critical success. Do you have any other ones? I have two more. Two more sixes. I roll three sixes and a whole bunch of ones. All right, so you're gonna roll four <laughs> bonus dice for damage against this thing. We'll roll these back, boys. It's a good thing this adventure is already published because if this was my first playtest, I'd be like, you know what needs to be tougher? Shamblers. Shamblers need to be way tougher. I rolled all twos. Wow. That was We're hitting, we just can't damage him. So what's the... Well, I damage with a seven. You got campfire points? Uh, so what does it look like, Broken Bow? A seven is fine. <laughs> um, it's, uh, so I turned around and LCR is gone. So I just kind of bring my stick back up again and swing low. Speed there we go. Right. <laughs> and uh, take out another one, like right across the back. You hear it crack and it kind of just folds. And I go lumbering over to where I saw LCR disappear, looking for her. Uh, LCR's hair is kind of spread out on the ground, indicating where she has fallen through. Um, broken bows up there. Uh, Kanakin, they're good. They're going to attack you, um, because the shamblers don't know what JM knows. And he's going to take, they're going to take a swing at you. Uh, I'm going to spend, I can spend a threat to re-roll those. Because, oh. good lord. You guys have given you me a no ton threat. of threat. You're welcome. Reroll failures <laughs> for any NPC. All right, good. Because I'm now at, I'm at eight threat. I'm going to go draft on the seven. Uh, I don't believe that a uh, four hits your defense. Is that correct? Close, but no. My defense is a five, so Kenikin just sort of eels his way around their attacks like a, like a mongoose. Well, you are up. Uh, okay, so I will I will make a quick bow towards the woman on the on the flaming wagon. She is spending her action attempting to put her wagon out. The wise avoid the flame while the foolish circle close to it. Uh, as I you say. watch, uh, uh, Kanakin, you definitely hear like a whistling noise, and something comes shooting out of the back of the wagon, streaking up into the sky, and explodes in a shower of green and gold sparks. Nice. They're under attack. <laughs> Ooh, ah. And then I will, uh, I will, I will, I will uh, definitely run towards a tree. Actually, I'll run towards Brokeabout and climb up her leg a little bit and do a backflip off of it to punch the uh, the skeleton in the head. I will give you two bonus dice to this attack from your narrative description. I will need it because I'm still scared. <laughs> Hiya! Okay, well that wasn't too terrible. I got a total of five. Uh, that will hit. Uh, it you need will. A four. Yeah. So it's just the base damage, though. Um, hmm. You know what? Since we're we got a lot of serendipity, I'm gonna take some serendipity from the pool. Okay. Uh, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to use three serendipity to add to this attack roll. Okay, I don't hear any. I don't hear any objections. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't have a voice in that. So yeah, it goes from six to three. <laughs> All right, that added uh, three more successes, so that puts me up to eight, and I needed four to hit, so I can actually put two of those into damage, which is very helpful. So this uh, takes the damage from five to seven, just enough. All right. Uh, 
so with that, the last of the shamblers, it breaks down uh, into dust as uh, you sort of rip the spine, like punch through and pull the spine back out of the shambler. And it... Finish him! <laughs> <laughs> Flawless victory. Uh, you can see that at this point, the woman on the wagon has emptied two water skins and the, the wagon is smoldering. She's stamping out uh, sparks on the back of her wagon. Who? Elciara, where are you? I'll, I'll take one of the water skins and dump it on Elciara. Elciara, you, uh, you are re revived to one shock. <laughs> There you are. Uh, you are it. muddy, and you are in a hole. Ugh. I will lift well, her out of the hole. Welcome back. Kind of by her hair? like. No, no, like Ooh. underneath her armpits. <laughs> All right. It takes, you, it takes you some time, Broken Bow, but you are able to lift your elven friend out of the hole. I, again, who are you travelers? I am Kenneken, a humble monk. From Huhanazi. Uh, Stand and deliver. No, wait. Sorry. I am Nightfinder. Your service. A Hurani, a Tavian, a Spriggan, an elf, and a dwarf. Have I walked into some sort of Blackwall or Inn joke? We're one short of a menagerie. That's. Well, my thanks. These unholy. You may am. Where are my horses? They cut my horse's harness. Um, they attacked me and took me by surprise. Uh, they bolted into the forest, and I do not know that I would have been able to hold them off had you not arrived yeah. when you did. You got a little something on you. Let me just. Let me just. Let oh, me just thank take you. It. Just, let me. Yes, fix I, that a little bit. She okay. kind of steps down. Thank. Th thank you. Thank you. Do you. And who are you, good lady? Are you some sort of valet or, or butler among your clan? No, I just, it just needed to be fixed. I, I just needed to. My name is Tenebrae, and I am a, uh, I'm a, a merchant. I'm, uh, what, I'm heading towards Drashil. What, are you, are you also on the road to Drashil? Did you, did you hear about the Paul, the curse? Is that why you're traveling this way? The what? Dross Hill, it's a, it's a small town that lies off this road. Um, I use it to cut through the wilds. Uh, it provides a nice stopping point between um, Brot Fort and Blackwall. And I, uh, uh, I planned on stopping there, but uh, several days ago I passed another trader and they said that there is a pall, some sort of haze that lies over the town. and uh, It blocks much of the sunlight and they also warned me that the unholy were active and... Well, I, uh... Seems, seems like that one is true. I, uh, was shocked to find them out here in the wild. They said that they were only around the... around the town. Listen, if you... if you don't mind, I could use help getting my... my wagon to draw sale. I am willing to provide you, uh, with food and lodging at the inn. If you would be willing to, um... Do they have a bath? Do they have a bath? I... what a strange question. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm sure I, I would be glad to pay for a bath for you if that is something. Oh, very good, very good. Would you like to wager on whether or not we run into more shamblers on the way? No, I did not become a merchant of uh, some renown by making wagers with strangers I found on travelers' trails. Um, JM. Yes. Broken bow would like to kind of. Um, move over to one of the trees and I would like to speak with the trees as one is wont to do as a spriggan. Um, so and see if they can locate a crazy or a crazed animal because we heard the whinny. You did hear the whinny. Now there's an animal out there lost and alone and I would like to find it. All right, so why don't you read the ability? Um, just to share with the chat kind of what are you pulling from to do this? Uh, I'm pulling my special ability that is called Tree Speaker. Spriggans may communicate with trees. Very nice. Uh, when you touch a tree and spend a combat action, you can gain vague impressions 
warnings and feelings from the tree, but not words or messages. So what I'm pulling then is like crazed animal has destroyed undergrowth in that direction. Um, or go ahead and give me a perception roll, Broken Bow, to see if you can interpret the images well. that the the forest and the tree is sending to you. Elciara, I realize I that you are. Sorry, what was that, Broken Bow? Uh, I speak for the trees. That's all. <laughs> uh, Elciara, I realize that you are uh, you are shocked and a little tired. What are you doing? Well, it seems like this lady is loaded. So I, sure, <laughs> I'm sure I could find something that could be given to the poor. I'm the first poor person, but there are many. Um, but the other thing is this whole first Paul thing, the unholy. Yes. And I'm trying to remember that there is a song or something that maybe I heard. So what? About this. What ability are you using? I'm using song lore as an elf. I uh, remember lore encoded in our songs and lays of uh, of lore. Um, so you get a little bonus to uh, try and knowledge things out. Okay. Now, uh, Elsara, so one of the things that we did with the quick start is we put in these GM boxes to kind of help the GMs kind of uh, navigate their first experience running myth. So, for example, Elsiara, just in case you wanted to, you have you have the uh, campfire card. How did you get that? Oh, that's true. Um, you could discover that one of the skeletons fights with actually had fought with actually a like a like a fine dagger that still shines as brightly as it did on the day of its forging. If you wanted to use that now, if you want to save it for later, you have this ability to find something cool when you play the card i mean find <laughs> this this butter knife kicked butt okay it also kicked my butt but you know yeah, that's how I mean, powerful that butter knife is um all right so you go, I, i'm very attached to it all right so. so go ahead and give me your roll uh broken bow what did you get in your perception roll uh, i got a one like i got one success all right, you get the vague impression that the horse is somewhere kind of to the northwest of here. If you point me in the right direction, I can try and track them. That's that's what I was going to do. I was going to turn back to the group and see who's like super invested in you know learning the story from El Sierra, which I've heard before. I've heard this story before. <laughs> uh, clearly, as they say. Um. And so seeing the dwarf watching, I'll tell her her it went that way. All right, so give me a survival check, uh, Dorena. Elciara, what did you get? I got two successes. All right, so and what are you trying to remember? Um, something about this curse and the, you know, something that would cause the curse and the dead to rise. So, I mean, there are a ton of stories about curses causing the dead to rise. That is In this area? So that is sort of bread and butter knife um, with stories <laughs> of the unholy. Um, but you've not heard that here in this area. But the name Dross Hill rings a bell. With the successes that you got, you don't really remember why. You have a vague uh, memory of um, a song about someone important from the age of legends now in myth there are multiple ages we are in the age of heroes the age that preceded this is known as the age of legends where these great wonders of magic and and technology and um engineering and just uh, uh all of the species kind of had like reached a, a a zenith unknown for a very long time and then it all came crashing down um, so for someone, for a, you to remember a song that's somehow tied to the Age of Legends, that's, I mean, that could be the source of this curse, right? Things from the Age of Legends tend to be a little bit more potent, and if people disturb them without knowing what they are doing, they can often cause unintended side effects. But I, I like where your mind is going, Elciara. I, 
I too, I'm, I'm actually intrigued by this. I, I'm, a, I'm a merchant, but I'm also a scholar. And I would be very interested in trying to discover what the source of these attacks is. And what this Paul is, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm sure as we get closer, we may be able to discover more about it. Uh, Dorena, what did you get? So I got one success and I got a one on my campfire. A one success and a one on your campfire. All right, uh, you're gone for nearly a half hour. Those horses are gone. Oh, Oh, no. Uh, you come back and you're pretty convinced that the only way to get this cart to town is for Broken Bow to pull it. I am writing in my I'm writing in my far book. I'm I'm giving a I'm giving some uh, some some descriptions of what has happened to my sensei and you know as 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 it was written in the Cosmic Harmony today we rescued a merchant from skeletons. That's a Nightfinder, what are you doing? You can see Kanakin is kind of sitting there writing. Uh, Broken Bow is like I've heard these stories before. Uh, Tenebrae and Elisara seem to be kind of nerding out a little bit. Eventually, uh, you're surprised that Durena comes back out of the woods in kind of like as clean and not covered in twigs and sap and dirt as you might have expected. That's what she does. Mm -hmm. I admire that. I look forward to our hot bath in town. All right. Maybe some warm cheese. <laughs> All right. Well, um, at this point, we're going to yeah. transition into what is known as a campfire scene, as you guys kind of help Tenebrae get to the town of Drasil. Now, a campfire scene, um, there's multiple different ways that we use this kind of narrative construct, but the, the campfire scenes sort of connect kind of the action scenes or the, the role-playing scenes. And in this campfire scene, this is sort of when you guys are, again, when you're telling the story of this first adventure, um, again, the campfire chats have a lot of kind of our thought and our process behind this like meta idea of players playing characters, telling their stories while those characters are telling like the stories of their history. Um, but basically, instead of making tests or rolling for encounters, every one of you will come up with a um, challenge or an event that you encountered along the the way, and you also get to narrate how kind of you guy how you overcame this challenge. Like, what so, did something block the road, and if they did, how did you handle it? Um, did someone stop you as you traveled? Who was it, and what did they want? You guys are kind of reminiscing about this journey. So, who would like to go first? And and uh, kind of share one thing uh, that happened from the from the point that you picked up the wagon before you got to Drasso. Go, Ross. Okay. So the wagon gets stuck in mud a little bit as we are, as we're pushing along. And sounds right. basically around the campfire, I'd be saying, you know, remember how the wagon got stuck in mud and 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 Dorena didn't want to have anything to do with it. And, <laughs> uh, and Brooke about you were having a tough time pulling the uh, the wagon in, until Kenneken thought some words of encouragement would help. So, you know, he wandered up to you and he's like, you know, you you fought like a hero back there. Your famous father would be so proud. And I just kind of get this glare <laughs> in response. <laughs> I'm like, yes, you're following in your parents' footsteps. It's it's such an amazing thing to see. And for some reason. Broke about pulls harder <laughs> and harder at the wagon, and it finally like pulls free so that she can get away from me. A little bit. <laughs> I was about to say, and somehow you dodged my footsteps. When I tried to step on you. I'm very quick, very quick. Yeah. So, Broken Bow, yes, what's something else that you encountered along the way? Um, as we encountered, um, and the afternoon was rowing later, um. We we heard no oh, uh, sorry I was about to do a a thirteenth age thing and send it off to somebody else but for me to fix to fix um, we we came upon um, 
a place where there was a downed tree. Okay. Uh, and for myself, um, it was fairly simple um, to, it was supposed to be rotten and I was able to kind of rip it apart. And as I did, a chunk might have flown and hit Kenneken in the oh. head. And, and it was an accident, I swear. <laughs> Cross my heart. <laughs> what if you were related to that tree? Nightfinder, what what happened? No. What's something you, else? You don't see a bat on my back, do you? <laughs> oh look. <laughs> <laughs> um, as we're going on this forest path uh, through the wilds, uh, as it were, um, the recent rains have swollen a creek, and to save broken broken bow more work because i i truly appreciate what she brings to the team i use my winter's bike to freeze over a section so Ooh. she can easily just slide it across the stream awesome thank you uh anytime elciara Dorena, what what would you like to uh like what do you remember happening on this journey Any you want to go first, or <laughs> you see, uh, Elciara, you know. Well, here's the thing. Back then, I really liked Kenna, but I couldn't let him know. Um, and uh, I was sort of drifting back. My ankle hurt. My head hurt. A hard day. But then some spooky bats <laughs> fly ah. around. And uh, said, you know, I hadn't seen them the first time. They were pretty spooky. And and Kanakin thought so too. And I never heard him make a squeak like that before. And suddenly he's behind the trees, but I'm good at hiding too. And so I was on the other side of the tree and I just sang a little something until we felt better. And then we went and caught up. The bat song. The bat song. Na 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 Broken bow. Durena, what's the last thing that happened that you remember as as the group is coming down um into this valley where Dross Hill is located? So Broken Bow is working really hard. Working up a sap. And Jarena notices that it's it's off kilter. So she, she will pause the group for 45 minutes. <laughs> so she can rearrange the inside of the cart to evenly distribute the weight. Symmetrically. Flammables in the middle so they don't catch on fire again. Evenly weight the balance narrate the whole thing relabel all the boxes relabel oh my gosh the labeling on these boxes is <laughs> appalling <laughs> absolutely appalling it's funny that you mention appalling because as you escort tenebrae <laughs> to this village of drossil which stands in this 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 woodland valley uh you can see that there are hills to the north and the west and they rise like walls around this village and a deep forest extends to the southeast but as you descend into the valley, the day darkens as if the sun passed behind a cloud. But as far as you can tell, the sky is clear. It's as if a great hand drew a shroud over the area. And you know that the afternoon sun should be shining brightly overhead. But the light is unnaturally cold and dim. And this pall seems to sink into your very soul. A small river runs on the far side of the village, and several buildings that you can make out, houses, an inn, a forge, a mill, they sort of dot this valley. Most of the village stands dark, but a few lights shine under the darkening sky, out of windows, smoke coming from chimneys. The mill's water wheel sits in the flow of the river, but is unmoved by the running water. And as Tenebrae leads you down into the village, she seems to be headed 
um, directing this now perfectly balanced wagon, uh, drugged by Broken Bow, to the front of the Harefoot's Inn. Yes, Kennekin. I, I think it's fair to say we've had a, a short respite. Oh, uh, yes. While, while <laughs> Dorena was rearranging the wagon. So everyone should recover their shock fully. Everyone should recover their shock fully. Uh, does someone want to make... Uh, so it's just a short respite. So uh, no wounds back yet. Is anyone... I don't think anyone took vitality damage. Oh, no, because... If it gets... Because Broken oh. Bow soaked all of it. Soaked. She soaked That's both right. rolls, yeah. All right, so we're going to pause here for tonight at the end of Act 1, at the start of Act 2. It's a three-act adventure. And before we sign off, I just, like, Ross, this is the first time you got to play. Um, for Evan, Maddie, and Mark, this is the first time you guys have seen Myth, Tales of Legend. Becca, this is your sort of second time moving through this. What were your guys' thoughts of kind of the intro, the system, kind of first first impressions? Well... All I can say is this is the worst system I've ever had. <laughs> no, I, I like it. It's definitely, it emphasizes teamwork because we all do different things and that's our niche. So, and that's fine. And it's not like, oh, I'm the weak, squishy mage. I roll just as many attack dice as, as Broken Bow on the attack. It was just a different form of attack. So mm -hmm. that was cool. I kind of like the narration and, and, the campfire die being able to use different things and serendipity is kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we have three, I believe, left after I burned some. You do, I, so keep keep in track keep track because this is designed for one, in, uh, you know, basically a one shot adventure. We're gonna keep track of our uh, serendipity and threat and campfire points through these these shorter sessions that we're doing. Ross, I think it's your I, first time playing. What like? I, it's fun. I, I surprisingly it rolled uh, fairly poorly on my initiative roll. And uh, what was really fun was the campfire card that I played. I failed the check. You're the one who like, failed oh, the check. Whoops. <laughs> uh, which is fine. I mean, that's it, it, it added something fun to the scene, which I really dug. Um, yeah, so so overall, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Yeah. Evan, See, I... And, and I was going to say, I, I kind of picture your bat... Were you scared of that they're bats or that there was just an odd number like 37 and you're not into prime numbers and that's what no, it was the fact that they were bats, that they were bats. <laughs> now uh evan I, I i do i do apologize for knocking you out uh in combat uh, you did get to kill something but you did roll basic what's essentially not like a critical failure but two narrative complications um yeah. any thoughts no, any I feedback mean, i mean it was it was enjoyable the the uh you know sort of winning at a cost and uh it uh you know very much allowed to uh to fit into the narrative theme that the for the character and um so there's uh, there's a lot of flexibility in sort of interpreting what's going on um and you know there's this light fun um uh setting that uh, informs uh, the way that you can um, play through, and uh, I've, uh, I've I've liked it so far. You know? And uh, you know, it's not it's not overly complicated in terms of you know what you have to roll and calculate and everything, and and moves quickly. So even though I spent a couple of rounds unconscious, I didn't feel like oh I'm on the sidelines and nothing's happening. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Now the one thing that we did not cover. And that um, we'll we'll bring up, and then Maddie, I want to, and Beck, I want to hear your thoughts as well. Um, but I just wanted to say, so two of the things we didn't cover is you can um, you can try and attack multiple targets, and we do have interaction attacks. So if you want to use your athletics to knock someone over into a disadvantaged position, or um, use perception or intimidation or persuasion to kind of trick or intimidate or shock your opponent you can make other attacks that are not just i swing my sword at it you can make someone hindered which means that they get a plus one difficulty to everything they do you can make them vulnerable which decreases their defense by one which is important when you're fighting Kanakin and he has an insanely high uh, defense that uh, I will remember for next time. But there are other ways, like other actions that you can be doing in combat. Um, they're, they're, 
aside from just it's my turn i attack him so i just wanted to toss that out as a as a reminder for next time um becca and maddie what are what were your thoughts on tonight's uh adventure first act um system um i enjoy and i don't i don't know if this is just because they were pre-gens or if this is something that is built into character creation but some of the connections and the quirks that the characters were given uh because sometimes i have like a piece of a concept of a character but it takes like four or five sessions for that to come together but to have a character with all of those quirks and stuff built in already and it, it does seem like that is part of character creation helped inform some of those decisions where i might have gotten stuck because it's like oh this character's new to me i don't know what to do mm -hmm. with him no, you, it, it definitely felt like you picked up on those and ran with them right off the bat. <laughs> yes. Uh, some of that stuff is in character creation, but I mean, when one person is making all of the characters, like like with me and these pre-gens, I was able to make connections that you probably won't see quite as often in, in, in an organic group. Um, but I, th I think the book, the, the book has guidance on how to do that. It just, we can't, we can't, you can never force anybody to do it. Right. So yeah. And Becca, so this is your second time playing. Um, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, second time playing. Um, I mean, Who did you play the first time? Uh, Kanekin. <laughs> um, needless to say, I killed more when I played that one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, I, I think I've said it before on stream. I got into role-playing games because of the storytelling aspect of them. And so something that I really appreciate about Myth is that it's not the GM telling the story and the players are playing inside of it, but that we are half remembering what has already happened before and so we get to tell it mm -hmm. our way. Well, thank you guys all for playing and uh, doing this sort of um, showcase of myth. Chat, if you have any other comments or questions, uh, both either tonight or as we kind of go through there, please feel free to, to uh, share and ask. We are, we are here to answer questions as we kind of go through this. Um, there was a lot of uh, comments on the butter knife. Um, uh, one... <laughs> Phantom of Truths, uh, LCR is now the bearer of the butter knife of Damocles. I really like, like that was that was a choice comment. So we will be back in two weeks. Uh, we're not going to play next week, uh, but we will play uh, the week after. We're going to do a rerun next week on Thursday. We will be back for Torg on Tuesday. Um, the horsemen have to keep riding. So V has to find more. Uh... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I have nothing to say or add to that. Check out all of the other great shows on the Ulysses International channel, including, but not limited to, uh, uh, Heretical Musings, which is a great behind-the-scenes shows on Fading Suns. Um, there is the Ulysses World Show, where they kind of give you the news that is going on in Ulysses land. Uh, Campfire Chats, which I may have mentioned once or twice uh, tonight. What, what is what is campfire I, I know, right um so check it out um uh also if you are a fan of torg there are only i believe three days left on the tharkold uh crowdfunding for game on tabletop it keeps um climbing so uh check it out and we will be back in two weeks for more myth tales of legend i am jm the gm these are my uh new heroes uh as they go and explore the town of drossel and discover what is behind the curse that has brought a Paul to this town. Uh, we will be back. Uh, until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and get some good gaming in.